this content is for kids. It's not for kids. No, isn't that what I said? No, it's not for kids. If oh. you are 13 years or younger, no. this is not for you. <laughs> Do I have to kill somebody in order to actually make that point across? No, man, you don't have to kill Wait no a one. second. Oh, no, 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 no. If you return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture. Greetings, you're watching Septum Sen vs. the World. I'm Septum Sen. This is Kodobuki J. Hey. And here's the final part of our Halloween special. Ooh. Where we talk about all the moon and all the mana moves that we are schmoozing up to. All the mana moves. So, again, anime that are uh, Halloween, Halloween uh, ish. <laughs> and uh, we do a rating system here where we, um, our, our Halloween y system, where you've got uh, one Halloween y means this isn't really, it's got like, it's Halloween adjacent esque, mm -hmm. like say, Record of Lotus Wars, according to what you would say would be Halloween adjacent, because it's a uh, fantasy. Or as we <laughs> ended off last week, apparently Demon King Damal might be something like that. And then. On the other note, a five animus is this is just like spot on mm -hmm. and awesome for our Halloween viewing. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, if we haven't seen it, we can only give it up to a three for reputation. You got to see it to really, you know, mm -hmm. go. So we're just going based on reputation here. So let's talk about one that I've been meaning to see for a while. Yeah. Which is Vampire Princess Mew. Mm hmm. This is a classic, from what I've heard. Right. Um, oh, volume two. I do have both volumes of the uh, of the um, OVA. I don't know where the other volume is. Ah. I think it's probably still on the shelf here. So you have the series still... in the OVA here. Yeah, read what it says on the back. I have been meaning to check this out myself. Bound by blood, cursed by fate, chosen by destiny. She may use the name Miyu Yamano when dealing with mortals, but the truth is that not even Miyu knows who she really is. What is certain is that she was born a vampire and human, the human half granting her the ability to walk by day, while her craving for the blood of the living brands her forever as a creature of the night. <coughs> oh my! Now, together with her sole companion, the Shinma, known as Larva. She exists in the Twilight Realm, where the worlds of light and shadow overlap, trapped in the body of a teenager forever. Her task, to serve as mankind's last defense against the forces of darkness. Oh. To hunt down those who would seek to harm the human race, to cast them back into the depths from which they came. The other. <laughs> so, essentially, it sounds like she is the cute high school girl version of Blade. <laughs> now, I've heard a lot of good things about the mm -hmm. series. Mainly it was for this, the OVA. Uh -huh. But uh, I also got the uh, TV. It looks fun. I'll give it mm -hmm. a three because it does sound like a really good yeah. Halloween-esque mm -hmm. in the outrun. Not sure, but... Yeah. Yeah. One that I am going to show off mm -hmm. tonight and one that he's got a better version of, mm -hmm. but I owe him for owning the series considering it's very mm -hmm. out of print. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing it in... Um, and the, what was it, uh, I can't remember what the magazine was. It was Anna, Anna something. Anna. Mm, sure. But it was that there was an Anna anime magazine that had a big old spread on this. Mm -hmm. And that is Karin. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got actually, he's got a, a better, more compact mm -hmm. version mm -hmm. of it that shows the manga art on it. This was the first anime that I pre-ordered. And I ended up paying a fair bit because of that. I think it was like 65, 70 bucks. Yeah. But then Ganny unfolded like right after this came out. Yes. And so this is a rare set. See, this has, and these have uh, 
mm -hmm. reversible covers so you mm -hmm. can have sort of the this is the animu art uh mm -hmm. i've chosen those as the covers to mm -hmm. display right now but there is mm -hmm. the uh other i've got the manga it's one mm -hmm. of the few manga i have the complete series of released here as chibi vampire because mm -hmm. they didn't think people could be trusted to go for just her name for some reason and Karim is a show about an un-vampire. She produces blood instead of needing it. But she's from a family of vampires, and they all love her despite her weirdness. Uh, <laughs> and, of course, she, you know, has a human best friend and a human that she ends up... Uh, Becoming very, very, very much attached to <laughs> as a boyfriend of hers. I'm, I don't think I have a picture. Oh, yes, there I he do. is. <laughs> yeah, there he is. And um, it's a fun series. It is actually one of the first shows I sought out to get before anyone else in the I'm group very did. very out of print. And uh, I just loved it. And um, it is definitely more comedy than anything. And there's a major deviation from the manga that is not in the show's favor. Winner Sinclair is annoying as hell. <laughs> but uh, it's still a fun show. And it does have some spookiness to it. Some good atmospheric uh, value. And again, you know, if you like your vampire stories... And you want something a little cuter and less gory, this is a good alternate for Halloween. I give it a 4.5. Uh, yeah, I give it a solid 4. Mm -hmm. So, now let's talk about Zombie Loan. Okay. I had somebody I dated a long time ago that was obsessed with this. <laughs> and I was like, okay, okay, I will check it out. And it is essentially about these zombies that take on monsters. Uh uh, and of course, uh, so Michiku, uh, Michiru Kita can see rings around other people's necks. And when those rings turn black, death follows. So when two boys from her class, Chika Akatsuki and Shito Tachibana, show up with black rings around their necks, Michiru doesn't know what to do. She tries to warm them, but they don't need it because they're the ones death needs to hide from. Neither one, however, hunt the living dead to, the, to be heroes. With certain loan keeping them alive, they need money to pay back the debt. <laughs> so it's, again, it's kind of, remind, it's kind of more of a, a comedic action take on, um, say, a prince, Corpse Princess in a way. Mm. Uh, it's really good, mm. really entertaining. Uh, kind of reminds me of Get Backers, hmm. but more of a like a more zombie-ish with a uh, undead and stuff. I would give this probably a, a solid three. It's decent to watch. Well, I don't really know enough, honestly, to give it a solid one or uh, or, or or the other. Uh, it sounds like it could be worth a solid two at least. Well, I'm gonna these next two. I'm gonna really be sad about because they're incomplete. Oh, and when and so far have never been completed. Mm. The first one is Yamishiba Japanese Ghost Stories, which only half of which have been released here in Japan, mm. I mean, in Japan, in the <laughs> United States. Uh, this is volumes one and two. So I believe there's twice as many more episodes. I think there's fifty some episodes. This mm. is twenty six. Mm. Uh, Ghost curses demons. If you crave tales of terror, seek mysterious mysteries that defy explanation. Go to the park at five. That's when the man in the yellow mask will arrive with his kamish kamishibai. The paper theater to tell his sinister story of Japan's darkest side. Hmm. I think this this does have a lot of potential for a really creepy Halloween type fest. I will give it a three because I haven't seen it. So three Halloweenies on this one. Yeah, I haven't seen it either, but it sure looks like it would be appropriate, so I can go with that. Another automatic three Halloweenies is, uh, <laughs> how would you say that, Holic? Uh, Isn't that how it's supposedly said? Yeah. I never understand the whole XXX thing. But um, there is no such thing as coincidence. There is only the inevitable. 
Watanuki has been haunted by dark spirits his entire life. A curse flowing through the bloodline preventing peace. When his incessant demon, uh, demons drag him to the ornate door of the dimensional witch Yuko. He meets a mysterious woman of, the, of insight and luxury, quick to help those in bind for a fee. So, you know, paying with their soul. Hmm. So, I've heard a lot of good from this. Mm -hmm. The reason why I haven't jumped on it is I've got this in the movie, but there's, like, I think two other seasons of it that they've never released in the United States. Mm. And it bugs the heck out of me. I know it's a pretty long manga series, so that would make sense. I need to see it eventually. Now, one that is awesome, and I free. consolidated it after a while... Uh, I actually not only consolidated it, but I got enough to get two series for the uh, price that I got for the uh, what I had. Nice. Which is When They Cry. So this is all the original three seasons. Um, you had the original When They Cry, mm -hmm. then you had, I think, Kai and then Ray, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there's a new one that's come out, and those that season hasn't really finished the story there have been yet. a few recent ones that have come out it was like outbreak which was like a sort of a zombie one and then yeah. gal i think is the redo yeah yeah so i am i mean this is about a bunch of kids who just you know normal everyday kids just mm -hmm. playing and enjoying life uh, right and, until murder happens Yes, and so um, definitely check out our anime anticlimax where we covered yes. seasons one and two. Uh, basically, it's based on a series of visual novels that are told in question and answer arcs. And the first series essentially adapts question arcs and the second series is answers, although that's not 100% accurate, but that's kind of a... A, a, a short, short version. But the first series, you can think of cute high school kids trapped in a gruesome, macabre Groundhog Day. <laughs> and then the second one is more of a, a like a conventional paranoid thriller mystery. Um, but yeah, that is, to me, that is one of the ultimate Halloween series. That is absolutely a must. <laughs> The one that I kind of upgraded, even though it's really still standard definition, I did it more just because Blu-ray is more durable than DVD. And, and that's smaller. Pet Shop of Horrors. But even then, that's not enough for me to it's for me. Throw, <laughs> enough, throw money to just get, like, not even a centimeter space. Um, but you have these huge shelves. Yeah, as you know, <laughs> I mean, you can see there's not that much space I'm saving. But this Again, one... Yeah, huge shelves. Is about this pet shop, and there's this guy there, and he sells these pets, but there are regulations, because these are special pets. <laughs> and they uh, have a lot of creepiness that follows. Uh, I have seen each one of these tales, mm -hmm. and of course the pet shop owner is the only thread that binds them, but it is very well done. It is very scary. I would say this is a true horror to have for Halloween, mm. I give it five Halloweenies out of five. Oh, by the way, also five mm. Halloweenies out of five. <laughs> I can go with three for Pet Shop of Horrors just because I haven't seen it, but it definitely sounds like it would be. Although I don't know if it's one I want to see. <laughs> there's an interesting thing there, yeah, where uh, there's like rabbits eating their way out of the stomach of a girl and stuff mm. like that. Yeah, some fun stuff. Lovely. <laughs> now, speaking of fun... <laughs> um, we have Magical Witch Poonie-chan. Miracle Tokarev, kill them all. <laughs> now, this is one that I'm not sure I would put as a high-ranking one, but you got this girl from a you got this magical girl who's visiting, and she's this witch, and she's a wrestler, and uh, you think that she's this you know good girl uh, character, but in turns that she's kind of an evil woman, mm -hmm. but um. And her job is to become, like, the biggest badass. So, it has probably one of the most amusing openers in all of anime. Uh, so, it's well worth watching. I I'm not sure whether I would throw this as a definite Halloween thing. Um, but, uh, if you haven't checked it out, you should. I give this 
two Halloweenies out of five. Yeah, I could give it a solid two. Borderline three, but solid two. All right. Okay, so. Okay. Now, one that you know, because I think you watched this. I, I have seen know, it, yes. Which is Maria the Virgin Witch. Mm-hmm. Well, it's got a witch in it, so I'm guessing yeah. that puts it, the, uh, puts it in there. <laughs> um, oh, and it also has uh, succubus, and it has uh, the church. Talk, I'll let you talk about it while <laughs> I put these up. <laughs> well, it's been a while since I've seen this series, but if I remember correctly, I believe it's... Maria is a virgin, and if she loses her virginity, I think she loses her witch powers or something like that. So, some angels, or like an archangel, I think it's Michael, like the archangel has taken it upon himself to kind of deflower her through any means necessary. I'm probably getting the plot slightly mixed up, but again, it's been a while since I've seen it. Um, but again, it's another, essentially another medieval setting, almost a sword and sorcery kind of thing, but it's more of a historical drama, if that makes sense. Um, but yes, with the in, involvement of, uh, angels and a succubus and, um, and witches and, and, and with the medieval setting and all that kind of stuff thrown together. To me, it seems a little Halloween-y. I'd probably give it um, maybe a week three for that, but worth a look. <laughs> uh, I'll give it a two. Talk about the next one. Okay, the one you just put up here? Because you, you've seen it. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, another one I've seen. Um, and this is a series, um, I believe we determined the other day this was a Trigger series, if I remember correctly. Um it's a fun show called When Supernatural Battles Become Commonplace, where you have, it's about the Senko High School Literature Club, where you have, uh, Tomoyo can control time, Hatako is the mistress of the elements, Chihuyu can create matter, and Sayumi can return any item to a previous state. But meanwhile, the club's only male member has a power called Dark on Dark, which is a black flame that looks cool, and that's it. <laughs> and it just so happens that he is a full-blown Chunabyo who wanted a power that looked cool, and then all the girls around him get actual earth-shattering powers and he is left with one that looks cool. And it, 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 and then they go about their everyday lives. And it would have been a brilliant series if they left it at that. But eventually they brought in this whole other weird little subplot. <clears throat> but it's still a fun show. It's a lot of... It's very enjoyable. I'm not sure I would necessarily call it terribly Halloween-y. Uh... I'd probably give it a, a week three or a solid two on that score, but it is a fun show worth checking out. Uh, let's see here. I know I've got it. Um, mm -hmm. I think I have interviews with Monster Girls, ah. I do. but I'm not gonna worry about that one okay. because that one kind of goes. There was this whole yeah. Monster Girl thing going for a what while. Was your go on that one? I uh, three, I guess. Okay. It sounds like it could be a thing. Okay. okay. Um. So, Monster Musume really kind of started off the craze, uh, where you've got all mm -hmm. these monster girls that are kind of exchanging from their monster world, uh, and uh, kind of staying with other students. And mm -hmm. a lot of them are in this weird twisted harem thing with uh, this one guy that is there. Mm -hmm. And um, that's pretty much the whole of it. Uh, because it's a bunch of monsters, mm -hmm. and because that's really what centers on is about a monster girls and a harem with a guy, uh, uh, it's kind of Halloweenish. Yeah. It's, um, I'd say, uh, let's give it three Halloweens. The main one's a Lamia, right? Yes. And then you got like a slime girl and a centaur. And, and then a spider girl in the back. Yeah. I have not yet seen this, but it looks like it could be fun. I would say it's probably at least a two for Halloween. 
Now, one I really wanted to really want to see, and a second season I think just released hmm. on uh, on physical. I'd like to see this, and that is Zombieland Saga, which I did mm-hmm. I did spring for the uh, uh, premium edition for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you so got me beat on that. Essentially, a guy goes in and he wants to form a uh, a what do they call those? The uh, an idol group. Yeah, an idol group. So he resurrects a bunch of them as zombies. And makes them perform. Yeah. I like the concept. It's entertaining. It's it's wrong, but it's uh, wrong in all the right ways. So I'll give this one another three out of five Halloween. And that one has a good rep. It's supposedly a really good show. Um, for the Halloween vibe, yeah, I could give it a week three based on what little I know. Now you said Monster Musume started the monster thing. This one was a monster harem before it was cool. Yeah. But they're they're they don't look monstrous the way they do in the other one. So another yeah. premium edition yes. for Rosario Vampire. Yeah. Uh, the anime or the advertisement for the uh, soundtrack that we never got. Yeah. Hmm. I think that would have been an excellent Although, thing. I will say they do feature songs in there, and to turn that back around there. Um. The, so you have you got the Yuki uh, the Yukiana the witch the vampire and the succubus, and the succubus has a song "Large Melons at the Beach" that is one of my all time summer anthems, and the uh, Yukiana also has a really cool song. They do each have two character songs that were featured in the show, and then the openers and enders are solid songs, but this was one where the manga was a actual legit good solid manga yeah it is a harem it is shonen but they actually take the time to educate you about both eastern and western folklore yes. with all the different monsters that show up and then the anime was really fun but it seemed kind of shallow next to the and, manga and it's about a guy who's really bad grades uh leave him to uh, have only one option which is the school that monsters go to and Somehow he gets accepted to this school and as a human. Not, humans are not supposed <laughs> to go there. The monsters are supposed to have carte blanche to do whatever they want if a human sets foot in the school. So uh, <laughs> he ends up befriending this vampire mm-hmm. uh, who um, uh, becomes a... Uh, he becomes her bitch right out of the gate. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she becomes much more serious at times, but she also has a kind of a bubbly personality with the pink hair and the silver mm-hmm. hair. She's much more serious. Well, he, she she has the Rosario that yeah. pretty much locks away her. In this series, vampires are badass. But when her power is locked away, she can still hold her own. Mm. But oh, it's nothing on the. <laughs> and he does eventually get powers mm-hmm. of his own. Uh, it's kind of fun, and he starts uh, turning into a ghoul, basically. Yeah. And his <laughs> uh, and the anime uh, is okay, but the. Um, but the manga is where it is. Mm-hmm. But as far as an anime to watch during the Halloween season, I'll give it five because that is very much a Halloween uh, series. Uh-huh. And I should mention that for my own personal storytelling, between the Yukiana and this and the concept of taste and this one, these were both series that were pretty influential to me. So they're pretty fun. I'll give that one a, a four because of the uh, appropriate assemblage of monsters <laughs> so one that i haven't seen the anime of but i have seen i have read the entirety of the manga ah. is yamada kun and the seven witches now uh this is a special thing if you uh you're supposed to take on like all seven of the school witches uh and you can get a wish i believe hmm. it's been a while since i've read it um and uh, each of the girls has a certain power that they are given as one of these seven witches. And one of them, uh, the uh, main one here, uh, has the ability to switch bodies. Hmm. And she ends up uh, hooking up with this guy here. And uh, it's there. So uh, they find out about the witches and the powers. And, uh, okay, okay. Yes, uh, and the idea is being seeking them out. I'm, it's kind of on that level of Rosario Vampire when you talk about kind of harem esque. Mm-hmm. I like it better. It's got mm-hmm. it's a little bit more solid, less shown any. Um, 
not as much monster wise so i'm not sure it's as great halloween wise mm-hmm. uh, and i don't know how well they did it in the uh anime because the mm. anime is much shorter than the manga mm. so i'll give it a three just because i'm an uncertain commodity curious to see that myself but i'll give it probably from the sound of it probably a solid two to a three all right one that annoys me a <laughs> enemy. uh this woman here hates the occult so mm-hmm. she's given run of a school for the occult. <laughs> yep. And uh, that's essentially the whole uh, thing, because there are other people who want to tear down the occult school, and uh, she ends up having to protect it at the end. This was a rough one to find. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is my version. You got the better yep. version. But yeah, she isn't it. Wasn't it her old man or her grandpa? I think yeah, her grandpa he disappeared. That disappeared, yeah, and she had to step in and take over. And she ends up, um, it's a pretty good series. It does have some, uh, some Halloween-ish vibes to it, but... I'll give it a solid three. Yeah, maybe a three to, yeah, solid three. Now, we've got Elfin Lied, which I'll let Jake talk about while I actually put away these. Okay, well, Elfin Lied you know is... <laughs> yeah. Well, Elf and Lead, of course, centers around uh, a mysterious race of beings called the Diclonius, uh, and specifically Lucy, who is the, quote, queen bee of the Diclonius. She's the one who has the power to create new Diclonius, and she also is longer lived and more capable of becoming a reasoning individual than the others that she creates. Um, it's really more of a dark thriller sci-fi series than a full-on Halloween type series, but it definitely has a large amount of horror elements in it, and, uh, could be called a horror anime, uh, by some measures, and, um... I almost argue it could be worth a five. It's certainly a, at least a solid four for me. Maybe a low five. So. I'll give it a four because I'm not sure I would put it necessarily Halloween, but it definitely mm-hmm. has some horror elements. Yeah. So it does have some, you know. Right. I mean, it definitely has blood. It definitely has, uh, you know, monsters and... And again, not all the monsters are the ones that look like monsters. Some of the people in that show. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, that, that scene with the dog, I have a hard time with. <laughs> yeah. But there you go. The scene with the dog. Those kids were rat bastards and pretty much deserved what came to them. And that opening thing, my God. <laughs> yeah. Where's the thing at? Okay. The thing. The disc. Well, you took it. Oh, I did. Okay, good. Okay, so... Y'all yeah, yeah, wondered. You walked right off with it and said, talk about it. <laughs> so, this one is one we're covering. Mm-hmm. So, at the end of the month, we're going to be uh, concluding our Halloween with a series called Helsing Ultimate. Mm-hmm. So, this one is like many series that kind of came back. Yes, and yes. Uh, essentially revisits a series to be a little bit more um, in with the manga. Mm-hmm. Uh, essentially, you've got Alucard, who is a vampire, and uh, we've talked about the other one. The difference here is you do have a lot more of the uh, manga elements place, like the Nazi invasion of London, mm-hmm. where a group of Nazi vampires comes in. Mm. It is... Uh, the animation quality is varied. Uh, some parts of it are really good, some parts of it are not so good. Mm-hmm. And uh, it is kind of cool to watch. I am not so happy with some of the uh, comedic flourishes in this one, but there are some good parts to it. Hmm. Uh, the next yeah, one... It is fun from what I've seen so far. Um, and I... Oh, let me get that while you're I talking. have not seen enough yet to where I can give it a full rating. Oh. But I feel like I've seen enough to where I could give it a four. <laughs> no. What's up? 
I'm looking for this because it's like... Oh. Uh, Oh yeah, that's one where I could have brought a better copy. Oh well. Yes. Yeah, uh, I don't I know if uh, that one... Have you seen that one yet? No, not yet. So this one I'm not sure about, but this High School DXD, I've heard uh, a lot of mm -hmm. interesting things about it. It's got mm -hmm. demon girls in it. Yeah. And it's got a guy they're all kind of fighting over. Mm -hmm. And it's a harem-ish. And it's got reputation. Mm-hmm. Which is interesting because Funimation has been all about censor, censor, censor. Mm -hmm. And then, then they put this out. So, um, yeah. Uh, and actually, there's a lot of those kind of demons getting involved in everyday life kind of shows. I thought about mm. bringing uh, The Devil as a part-timer, too. That one could probably rank about where this one would, I would imagine. Yeah, I've got yeah. that one, but I yeah. decided to put it up. That one I could rank at probably about a solid three. This one I haven't seen yet, so I give it a three on reputation. Yeah. Oh, and I give this one a five because... Mm. All right. This is a fun one. This <laughs> one is one I actually have. It has a Blu-ray release, but it's mm -hmm. not as nice as the I know. freaking DVD release. And that is is this uh, zombie. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love that, like the sparkly, kind of weird, mm -hmm. pinkish sparkly stuff. Mm -hmm. It is just cool. It is weird that they I mean, did that, that big and... ass set and did not do Blu-ray. Yeah, yeah it's DVD only. And this is the sequel. Uh, mm -hmm. Is this a zombie of the dead? Mm -hmm. um, I kind of like how you got the manga panel stuff mm -hmm. in the back. This is mm -hmm. a harem esque series about this guy who was brought back by a necromancer, mm -hmm. and he's the zombie. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's got to destroy uh, kind of monsters. Um, he is also a magical girl. Yes, and, and it came a magical <laughs> girl as well. It is a comedy. It is a harem style comedy. And it is quite funny. It has a lot of monsters in it. I think that if you have not seen that, uh, you should. You do yourself bad by not. Um, mm -hmm. It is a fun one. I would mm -hmm. say that this one, because of its nature is an excellent one for Halloween. I will give it a five. Yes, you didn't mention... You mentioned monsters, but you didn't mention specifically that ninja vampires are a thing in this. Yeah, well... <laughs> it is... I try to and, forget that and, character. And, of course, <laughs> he... It's not just that... He accidentally stole a magical girl's transformation power, and her... Magical pink chainsaw mistletane <laughs> is his weapon of choice when he transforms. And everyone thinks he's this cross-dressing pervert because of it. It's, it's fun. So what would you well, give it? I would give the... Yeah. I would almost give it a five, I think. I would give it a solid four. Yeah. You know. Okay, there we go. Yeah. And Helsing. Mm-hmm. All right. Have you seen this one? Put that up. I have. Yes. Um, we have a very short little OVA here, three episodes, called "Le Portrait de Petite Cosette." It is a creepy ass show. <laughs> I don't remember much about it, but I remember it was creepy. I mean, she's <laughs> kind of a marionette, mm -hmm. and. Uh, there's this kind of locked room in the back that this guy goes to in the back of this kind of doll shop. Mm -hmm. I don't know a lot about it. It was kind of strange, a little bit creepy. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't watched it in a while, but it definitely does count as a horror anime. Mm -hmm. um, because it's mm -hmm. kind of back to an unknown commodity for me, I'll give it a three. <laughs> I remember it was creepy and weird and definitely had a horror vibe. I just can't remember the particulars about it. Um, so I'll give it a solid four. Now, one I'm kind of PO'd about because Netflix got this and they decided, oh. nope, no physical for this. So I had to take it into my own hands to get a, uh, not so, uh, legal physical, uh, which is Little Witch Academia. Hmm. Now, it's actually a pretty cool looking a set, considering mm -hmm. all things mm -hmm. are considered. Uh, this one is about this girl who uh, decides she wants to be a witch. And she managed to get enrolled in a witch's school, but she has these issues uh, with flying and doing a lot of things. It's kind of a worst witch meets Harry Potter situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is quite fun. Hmm. This is an amazing series. 
I recommend it to anybody who's a Harry Potter fan, a Worst mm -hmm. Witch fan. If you really like those, this is the jam, mm. uh, so to speak. And this little thing came with the uh, series plus the movie. Um, and uh, I will say this one probably is straight out a... Mm, I'll give it a four out of five uh, Halloweenies for this time. I could probably give it a three for rap. But I just was thinking, if we're going to keep, we keep coming back to these magical academies, uh -huh. we got to have this one on here. Go ahead. <laughs> and you do have a nice set. I do. Maho I Sensei. Upgraded to the Yes. Blu -ray. Maho Sensei Nigima, which I did. I upgraded for the Blu ray and. I basically had the individual sets, and I was willing to condense them to the Blu-ray. Um, but this is such a cool little box. I, I, I do slightly envy them this. But, of course, Negima is in that same basic ballpark. It's definitely a harem series, but it really does go hardcore into the shonen aspects, especially in the manga. There's a lot of stuff in the manga they never got around to in the in the anime. Like, for example, that Setsuna is half crow demon, but you don't know that from the show. You'd mm -hmm. never have any clue. And then, of course, you have Evangeline, who's a vampire. Um, so there's a lot of different uh, types of characters in here. They're, the main character, Negi, is a witch in... Oh, no, a witch. A wizard in training. Um, and it is a magical school, although not all of the girls necessarily know that, you know, really. Um, and you do have a magical perverted ermine as well. Um, it's a fun show. And I, I give it a good solid four. Um, you know, on par, again, with like Harry Potter or whatever. Um, so... <laughs> I give it maybe a three. I don't feel like it's as uh, high up, which wizard wise, there's not yeah. as much. If and, they would do, they need to do a proper adaptation you know, of the manga because it feels more you know. magical girl like Sailor Moonish yeah. than it does, um, uh, witch as in like, well you know, yeah. uh, Halloween witch. <laughs> now this is one I debated about, which is uh, Le Chevalier Deon. Now, this is one I could upgrade, but look at the coolness of those. Yeah. I mean, these slipcovers are really freaking awesome. Um, Paris, 1742. A coffin floats in the shimmering sin. On the lid, the word written in blood, Psalms. Inside, the body of a beautiful woman, Leah de Beaumont. Hmm. Now her brother, Daon, seeks the reason for her mysterious murder and uncovers an evil that cast shadows in both palaces of the king and the dark alleys of Europe. Uh, this one is interesting because it's got a lot of spell wielders. It's got zombies in it, and mm -hmm. they are creepy zombies. They're mercury-blooded zombies. Mm. And um, it has a lot of disturbing nature to it. Uh, I would give this one a solid three, though. Mm. I don't know it, but based on what you say... Probably a solid two until I know more. We need to cover it sometime. It's yeah. a really good series. Good times. Now, one I think we're both going to agree is a high-rated one. Yeah. Is a Rumiko Takahashi series that is also out of print. Yeah. Called Mermaid's Forest. Based off of something we've covered earlier. Mm -hmm. Except, though, these actually did come to DVD. Yeah. And, uh, briefly. Briefly. <laughs> I don't have the box for it, which would make it even more valuable. Yeah. But uh, essentially, we talked about this in the first video. You eat mermaid's flesh. You can be immortal, or you can become a demon, or you just die. And these are the adventures of two such immortals mm -hmm. as they walk the world. And they do have an adaptation of the mermaid scar one. I don't know if they it's have a... It's a two-parter right at the end. And I don't know if they have an adaptation of the other story. I'm pretty Mermaid sure Force. they do, but I've actually only watched the last two episodes. I need to watch more. I, I have it. I need yeah, to watch it. I need to. I do need to watch it beforehand. Uh, I think that it is the one named Mermaid's Forest. I think you're probably uh, right. But I really do want to need to watch it before I'm going to say yes or no solidly. A good one. I'd give it a five just because it's creepy as heck. Mm -hmm. It's a great horror tale, 
and it is the essence of Japanese horror right there. Well, not having seen most of the series, I can't give it a solid five, but based on Mermaid Scar and what I know from those OVAs, I can give it a four, I think. Now, I talked about Ayakashi having a spinoff, mm -hmm. and that is Mononoke, mm. also out of print. Mm. <laughs> In feudal Japan, evil spirits known as Mononoke plague both households and the countryside, leaving a trail of fear in their wake. One mysterious person has the power to slay the Mononoke where they stand, and he is known as the Medicine Seller, and he vanquishes the spirits using the power of the Exorcism Sword. However, in order to draw his sword, he must first understand the form, truth, and reason of the Mononoke. Um, this also came from that goblin, goblin cat or something like that storyline. Mm -hmm. Really, uh, I've not heard, uh, I've not, I don't know enough about it to give it more than a three, but it looks like it's got a good rating there. I can go with that. And that gives me a thought. It does it. And that's uh, another yes. Mononoke series. Yes. Um, Mononoke. Or what was it? Not Mono. Monogatari. Monogatari. Yes. I'm thinking Mono something. I thought about that briefly, but I was like, there must be a reason you didn't pick it. If you want something that's extremely expensive, yes, you could get all of Monogatari, like I do. <laughs> you lucky bastard. Now the movie, I have much of it. Now the movie, is, the movies, the, the trilogy, they are worth it because it's a vampire story through and through. And the main character of this is a vampire. There he is. And a lot of this is him adapting to that and trying to deal with a lot of the supernatural events in the world. And he's got this girlfriend who is a sundere as hell. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's got a lot of supernatural uh, stuff, but it's also got some stuff that's a little bit creepy. If I remember, the, the, the pigtail girl... And she's a ghost. Oh, which one? She's a ghost. Oh yeah, no, I was meaning the bra braided pigtails. She's a cat girl, isn't she? Yeah, one's a cat girl, yeah. one's a, one turns out into a snake woman. Yeah. There are a lot of various monsters there. Mm -hmm. This one actually is very appropriate for Halloween. Mm -hmm. uh, I would suggest streaming it. I don't usually suggest streaming mm -hmm. it, but buying it would cost you yeah. everything, so I would not uh, do that. Um, I got lucky. I got 90% of it uh, relative, well, cheap for the series, and uh, then bought up the last two bits I was missing. I was missing, like, uh two pieces and that was it and mm. that wasn't too bad so you know not terrible but uh well hmm. worth your watch i would give it a four i could do that it's not really spooky so much as weird but it definitely has a vibe to it <laughs> all right we're moving now yes. one i haven't watched in years i need to see it i still haven't seen it also it has kind of that also vampire bund, uh, feel to it but uh, not quite as bad as that and that is Moon Phase has one of the more entertaining openers I have seen. Hmm. I love this box set. Yeah. Such a cool box it's set. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's a bit... I don't like how it... Again, sexualizing little girl vampires. Uh, who, of course, they're, they're not little girls technically. Like Evangeline, good example of that too. And uh, Negima. Uh, she is barely sexualized in that one. And, you know, you got this photographer guy who kind of goes in and um, ends up, well, getting trapped with this, uh, under the spell of this vampire girl, who's mm -hmm. this ancient vampire. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, it is an enjoyable series. I haven't seen it in years. But from what I recall, it would be very much a good Halloween series to watch. Mm -hmm. I'll give it a four because I think it's higher than. It might get higher if I rewatch it and go like, oh yeah. No, I still haven't seen it, but I give it a three based on rep. Now this one... Same thing with this one. Uh, yeah, neither of us have seen it, but Mo would recommend it. He did, yeah. Uh, Mask of the Wolf, Okamikakushi. Kushi. Yep. Yeah, Okamikakushi, Spirited Away by the Wolf. And that's about it, I think. It's this town like at night. Uh, these people get spirited away. And uh, some people are next. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, Sounds fun. I give it a three. 
<laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. I want to see it. I do need to. Uh, here is one yes. that I do feel is um, in a different way. Halloween-y. Uh, I will give this actually a four as my start, but I will have Jacob talk about it because I'm going to put some hmm. stuff up. Yes, so this is from the late Master Satoshi Kong. This was his one TV series. This is a very nice set. I kind of envy him this, but I still have the old Guinean sets, and hey, I don't really want to get rid of them. Uh, but I never had the art box, so that's, you know, but this is a steel book. It's nice. But basically, you have this Shonen Bat, or Lil Slugger, as he is sometimes called, who apparently is going around attacking people, or so they think. And it essentially follows a, it's sort of a disjointed story uh, told in vignettes with various people who we meet and get to know as they encounter uh, Shonen Bat. Uh, and usually they actually are offered some sort of a release from the real horrors which are in their everyday lives. It's a very weird, trippy series. Does have some horror elements to it. It definitely has a dark and twisted vibe. Um, I could definitely, and it has one of the best openers ever. And it is a very twisted opener. <laughs> but yeah, I would, um, I would debate giving this five as a Halloween series. But it's easily a solid four and might be a week five. <laughs> Let's see here. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, I think that goes there. Oh, no, no, mm. no, no, no. Mm. Oh, no. So what was your ranking on that one? No. Hold on. Okay. I said, I said four. Oh, you did? Sorry, I didn't hear it. Yeah, I'm just trying to get these out. Uh, you may have heard enough about this to talk about it, because I haven't actually seen it. Uh, well, I do know this is not one I really want to see, called Parasite the Maxim. And the reason I don't know that I really want to see it is that I know this is well known for being a full tilt, all, all wheels to the road, full gear, body horror, just... I'm not big on body horror, and from what I hear, that's what this is on about. Oh, yeah. Um, I know it has something to do with some sort of, like, an alien parasite, symbiote, some such thing. Uh, it's supposed to be gory as hell. I will probably never watch this show. But based on, what, based on what I know, it probably gets a three for the Halloween vibe. Yeah, from what I've heard, this one I would go with a three on. Ugh. So I spotted a couple others over here. I was surprised you didn't pick. Like, what about that one? I don't know if I would. Well, it could be considered, I guess. <laughs> it's pretty horrifying. So, <laughs> this one is uh, Resident Evil Infinite Darkness. No, because that's on the same premise of the last one. Oh. We'd be picking up every uh, isekai out there. Uh -huh. Um... So, Resident Evil uh, Infinite Darkness. This one is an interesting story uh, set in that area of the CGI Resident Evil movies. It's a Netflix series. I was glad that it did get its mm. release there. I think it will get a second season, and mm. that's also cool. It follows this mysterious event that happened during a wartime where zombies appear to have been involved and an investigation mm. is taking place that leads to the White House. Mm. Now... I really like this. This kind of uh, steps right up right before the events of Resident Evil 6. And I'm a Resident Evil fan. I will give anything Resident Evil a 5 because Resident Evil is right there with Halloween. Hmm. Well, not being familiar with this myself, I can only go 3. But what I know of Resident Evil, I'm sure it's worth that. So, next up is Requiem from the Darkness. Hmm. This is another one. It has been an age since I've seen it. Um... I don't remember. You don't even see that one around much anymore. Yeah, I don't remember a lot about it. I know that they like fight uh, demons, <laughs> and they are like special exorcism group. Uh, it wasn't one that left a lot 
into mine, so I'll probably give it a three because I don't know a lot about it, mm. um, which is sad. I've seen it. Uh, it's just I don't remember a lot. You know how you watch series? Yeah. Just, and it's been years, and it didn't hit you something memorable? Yeah. We talked about one uh, a couple weeks ago, 11 hours. <laughs> there you go. So I'll give it a three because I can't really. I know jack shit about this one, so I'll go two. All right. Well, you picked up panty and stocking. So, uh, I mean, panty and stocking is uh, about these uh, two angels. Uh, one who uses their, uh, one of them is panty, who uses her panties as heavenly mm -hmm. weapons. And one is garter belt. I mean, no, sorry. One is stocking, who uses her stockings. Yeah. And garter belt is the priest that uh, works with them. And they've got to uh, fill their quota of demon slaying mm -hmm. in order to get back into heaven. And then there's scanty and knee socks there. Yeah, two uh, demon equivalents there. <laughs> yes. So, uh, I mean, uh, I would give they it... They do fight monsters on a weekly basis. Yeah, I'd give it a three and a half. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's it's worth a solid fr three at least. It's, uh... <laughs> it's almost animated like a Cartoon Network series. Well, this is absolutely <laughs> pandering to the Cartoon Network crowd, I really think. Like, I think it was Japan was like... <laughs> How can we make a? Sh How can we outdo the Americans at their own game? <laughs> so I've got one that I already rate five, mm. which is School Live. This is one that I um, what well, we did cover on we did. our uh, anime climax. Oh, was this was one that Mo brought up for us, and, and mm -hmm. this is very well. This one mm -hmm. I liked so well. I went ahead and I got the premium because mm -hmm. the premium was super cheap. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were selling the premium oh, for yeah. a while cheaper than the, uh, yeah, that's the right side. Yeah, go figure. Uh, cheaper than the actual series. Mm -hmm. So I had to. I had to upgrade. This is so good. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a lot of psychological horror in it. It's got um, legit horror in it. I'm not going to spoil it because even talking about the plot kind of gives away the secret. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would just say watch it. Mm -hmm. Don't read anything about it. Just jump in, and I, I will tell you it will be well worth your time. The biggest reveals at the end of season one, uh, no, season one, the big episode one. So watch yes. the first episode, and then tune into our discussion to learn all about yes. the show. <laughs> And um, this is a nice one. It yeah. comes with a nice art book and everything. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's got that That's a nice cool little edition. thing with the art book. And mm -hmm. I didn't know what this was about when I saw mm -hmm. it, which... Uh, so. I didn't realize what it was mm -hmm. until I... And this is the rare show that the... the opening animation changes with every episode. Mm -hmm. And it, it really, really helps add to the impact of so, the show. So I've given it a five Halloweenies. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you look? Oh, at I'd give it a five, yeah. All right. No doubt. We're getting closer to the end. Let's not add to it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this next one is a vampire one called Shiki. But you have a, these Shiki, which are vampires, um, and it kind of creepy ass cover. follows vampire society versus human society. I do have this as the um, special edition mm -hmm. of, I mean, the premium, which I'll eventually take this out and I'll add it once I finally watch it. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of good things about it, uh, vampire-wise, as a story, and it's got a lot of social commentary. I will give it a three because it sounds like it's cool. It looks pretty cool. I said I wouldn't add anything, but I realize that there's one that's straight horror <laughs> that I need to add. But that's okay. That because one looks creepy. You as can shit, talk so about those. Yeah. Talk so well, I could talk about one of them. You know, you know at so, least a little bit about yeah. the second one. So. so this first one, I've actually seen the show and read the manga, so I can talk a little bit. And that is the show Soul Eater, and then it had a sort of sequel, more spinoff than anything, called Soul Eater not which i have not yet seen this one but my understanding is it's a more comedic take which the show itself has a lot of comedy to it as you can tell by blair being right there on the cover the uh cat that turns into a human who has uh very little regard for any clothing other than that hat um but right there on the front you have maka alburn who's a meister and soul who's a weapon and this is in a, uh, basically a Shinigami-type society where you have these people who pair up and you have Meisters and Weapons. Um, the other major characters, there's um, Black Star and Tsubaki. 
he is a pompous twit, and she turns into a Kuzarigama or any number of other weapons. And then you have Death the Kid, who is Death's own son, and he is a hardcore OCD freak, and his need for balance means he has two weapons, uh, the Thompson twin uh, sisters, who turn into guns. Um, you also got Dr. Frankenstein there. You got Excalibur in the back. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a fun series. Uh, it's, it actually gets into some pretty, Medusa is one of the great villains. She is a really twisted piece of work. Um, the m manga goes much further than the show, as is usually the case. Yeah. Um, uh, but the show does a decent job of adapting the manga up to a point. Uh, and it's a good solid series. Again, I can't talk as much for not, but I'd say the first show is a very solid I'd give it a week four for Halloween. I'd probably give not a three, not having seen it. Now I know why this one did not get picked because I yeah. I had uh, not when I filed them and separated them, it ended uh -huh. up stuck in the movies. Oh, which is Red Garden. Uh -huh. Now Red Garden says, "Would you kill to get your life back?" While alive, Kate, Claire, Rose, and Rachel each explored the streets of New York with the promise of limitless futures unfolding before them. Uh, but now, brought together as members of a blood-stained sisterhood, their once delicate hands reach out to silence demonic beasts no ordinary weapon can destroy. Brutally murdered, only to be resurrected as clandestine killers, the girls must stalk their prey with primal ferocity or risk losing what remains of their so-called lives. Uh, this one was okay. Okay. Um, it wasn't as good as I'd hoped it would be. It is a horror-esque series. I would say this would be a four Halloweenies, by the way. Five Halloweenies okay. for that one. I can't rate Red Garden since I haven't seen it, but I will give it a three because it sounds like it. But you triggered one. You said no more, but I'm going to go ahead and do this one. Watch it. Yeah, watch that because you don't want them falling. Yeah. For a very two very specific reasons, Dora is a fun, fun, fun show. It's a fun show, but the main reasons I wanted to mention it, Henri is not unlike these characters he was just talking about in some ways. You actually have several characters here who are somewhat monstrous. Uh, Izai is the information broker. Uh, the, this dude, uh, I don't remember his name offhand, Isaiah's bitter enemy, has got superhuman strength. But the main thing I want to mention is Selty, who's a Dullahan, a headless horseman. And we haven't had one of those yet, have we? No. Nope. So you kind of have to have a headless horseman in any discussion of Halloween. So, uh... I would say this is probably a solid four for Halloweenies, actually. Uh, because I don't really consider it having a ton of spooky elements, but there is a lot of off and on to it, I'll give it a three and a half. Okay. Um, I still need to finish the second season before I can really... Get yeah, it. why did we stop watching? <laughs> we ran out of time. We started filming this show. Um, <laughs> so let's see here. Then Vampire Night, uh... which... This actually was promising. Kind of love story. Kind of yeah. like a, uh, a series where you got these vampires at a school. And you yeah. got the humans on the other side of the school. And you got the people who are uh, there to kind of keep them in line. And uh, the politics in between. And a little bit of a romance there yeah. between Zero and this girl. And it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then Vampire Guilty came in and screwed it all up. With and the they ending. shat the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, my way was nicer of saying it, but yes. <laughs> Essentially, yes. That would be, I uh, did not uh, like yeah. Guilty one bit. Uh, but yes, the first series had promise. Uh, but is a Halloween series... Yep, vampires. It's all yeah. about vampires. I could give it a maybe a low four. Just uh, Yeah, a very appropriate yeah. subject matter. Yeah. It's not super spooky, but definitely... Right vampires mm -hmm. 
All right. Usho and Tora. Hmm. I don't know much about this. <laughs> Not on either. Uh, but it's about demons. But huh. demon hunters. Hmm. And I've also got the OVA. Hmm. So I've heard a lot of good things about it. Um, I have that big ass so, box. So why didn't you bring that? Because I didn't think about this as a Halloween series. What it is? Okay. With demons and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I mean demons. I haven't seen it, so I don't know. <laughs> I'll give it a three because it sounds all, all demon y. Sure, why not? <laughs> so this what one. I have seen that was very popular yes. on the Cartoon Network at one time, which is Trinity Blood, and it's kind of got almost a uh, what was it? A true crime uh, feel to it. A little bit. With some investigations of vampires and the occult. And a lot of people like to crap on this series. I, I thought it was fun. I didn't mind it. I thought it was a pretty good series. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I would say that as far as a Halloween series... It's very vampire esque, very bloody, very all this. I'd say I'd say good four. What are you saying? Mm, I could do that. Probably a week four. So one that's man, my copy beating all the heck. Mm -hmm. Which is Tokyo Ghoul. This one definitely has a lot of horror elements. There are these humans and then there's ghouls, and ghouls feed off of human flesh and kinda of live within society and they have different powers. You got this one guy who ends up Almost trying, almost being a ghoul's meal, when um, he goes on the uh, a date with this uh, blind date with this woman, and ends up uh, she ends up getting killed instead, and he gets damaged, so they transplant her eye into his, uh, which infects him, and he ends up becoming a ghoul himself. Mm. Uh, the series goes off the rails in the second season, but I've heard it returns uh, in the next, so I'll I'll reserve judgment. Mm. Actually, Kim really liked. This hmm. season, but thought the uh, but agree with me. The other one jumped the shark. I have not seen it before or after the shark, uh, but I definitely know about Rep because that is a super popular show, and I know it's a super popular costume even now. So, uh, definitely three Halloweenies, but I haven't seen it, so I can't go higher. But. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that's about right. Um, well, actually, no, I'll give it a four. Mm. Okay, so what I've seen, but I can't remember anything about, is uh, Toko. Okay. It's another one of those, like, hey, uh, we're going to use you to fight demons and stuff thing, mm -hmm. which just seems mm -hmm. to be a normal for these types of series. Yeah. Um, I'll give it a three because it just went back to unknown commodity. <laughs> I know nothing about that, so... Maybe... I check out a pretty nice set here, don't Yeah. Uh, it looks uh, like it's worth it. obviously three. got it for $11, the second in charge. Right, right. <laughs> they were slipping. The... They don't slip very often. Oh, yeah. They, I saw some this week that if it's still there when I get paid, I will get it. Um, so are we ending on a week one like that? You don't want to end with a bang or something? Is, know, it, I mean, is there anything left? Well, okay. Let's have something fun to end on. Okay. Well, let's end on succubuses. Okay. Succubi works. Good oh, luck. that's... <laughs> uh, yeah. Good luck, Ninomiya Kun. Yes. Uh, basically, it's a it's a harem with succubuses. One of those shows <laughs> that languished in the ether for years and then inexplicably got a release. <laughs> so you know, it's it was entertaining. I it was. enjoyed it, and uh, <laughs> but it has a bunch of succubuses with uh, seducing a person. Mm -hmm. I'd say that one would be worth that. I believe they had incubi as well, yeah. or at least one. So I'd say um, it's worth at least a three, if not a four. Oh yeah, I would say so. I'd give it a four. Well, I, I give it a three, mainly because it's not extraordinarily great, but it's fun. <laughs> there you go. At least it's one that we know is a fun series we can yeah. end it on. So, with that being said, there's a whole bunch of anime that you can watch for Halloween. If you were taking score at home, uh, just mm -hmm. get the ones that are four and fives from us, and mm -hmm. uh, you probably got yourself one heck of a of a month to watch. Right. And again, if you got any fours or fives that we didn't mention, feel free to let us know. Oh, yeah. Put know? it in the comments. We, we love yeah. to hear it. Mm-hmm. With that being said, I hope you've enjoyed this. Mm -hmm. If you have, hit the like button. 
Hit that subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. And check out our discussion on Helsing Ultimate. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye.